right, here is our 2021 gear loadout. This is what we typically bring with us on our backpacking trips. The difference between us and a lot of other videos is the fact that we are actually a couple and a lot of the stuff that we have in here is couple related. So a lot of stuff is two person, which you don't see very often. So it's a little bit unique. So we wanna go through our packs and what we typically would have with us on a backpacking trip. And then we'll also talk about some things that we might bring with us for different scenarios, such as going to a lake or if there's trees around, stuff like that. So both of us utilize Hyperlite backpacks and mine is a Hyperlite 55 liter Porter pack this pack is like eight years old at this point and I have a lot of their newer ones as well but this one's just held up really well and I don't mind beating it up because it is so old whereas the other ones are like perfectly white and I don't really want to get them super dirty yet but even after eight years it's super durable I have some scuff marks but um, overall still in really good shape and you have the Southwest model um so i get all of the pockets on the outside and there is like a little drain hole at the bottom for if you do have you know a rainy situation the water is supposed to flow through instead of getting anything wet um yeah so with the porter pack i like that you can attach a lot of different stuff to it it has a lot of daisy chains it does not have the all the different pockets like that pack does so in my pack, overall my pack never changes very much in weight because I have the sleeping bag, the tent system, and then my clothes, and then some extra stuff such as camera gear. So if I open this up, right towards the top, I have some things that I'm going to access quickly, which would be a water filter, which we are trying out the Be Free Catadyne uh, water filter which so far it's been really good we've heard that potentially it could have leak issues at some point but we haven't run into that but if it does have a leak issue i have a two liter uh, bottle here that the filter itself can screw right into and that is our backup system because we are using it i do have another backup filter just in case as we're testing out the durability of this so that is our water filter system so as we're going down the trail we can access water very easily next right after that i have use, utilizing all the hyperlite pods and i have my camera gear so all my batteries filters extra lenses all that type of stuff i have right in here and i know right where it is and it's all nice and compact so very easy to access and then next under there is my emergency slash clothing bag so I always have enough clothes and warm clothes in here in case of an emergency. So if anything happened for whatever reason, I can stay warm and get through the night. But clothing wise, I always have two sets of clothes. I have the set that I'm wearing and then I have a set that I can swap into. And when I swap clothes, then I can wash and rinse the dirty, nasty clothes and let them dry out. So then I'm not carrying a bunch of different pairs of clothes. I have a down jacket in here. I've got gloves. I got a rope to hang food up. And I got my sleep pillow. And that's pretty much it in that. And then right below that, sometimes depending on conditions, I'll throw in an extra pair of a uh, long sleeve shirt or pants just in case. Uh, it also is really nice for being in the Alpine at night just to have something that's a little bit warmer. But I don't access that till later, so that's down pretty far in my pack. And then after that, now it's the sleep system. So we use the Hyperlite Ultimate two person tent and we also use the bug insert as well because up here in Washington we have bugs all the time and it gets absolutely terrible in July with bugs so we almost always use this if it's winter time then we don't use the insert we just use the outer shell but that is the sleep system right there that's our tent and all links to that type of stuff can be found in the description down below the video and then we always have different types of stakes. A lot of these are titanium stakes. Uh, if it's snow situation, we have different stakes for that. 
for the tent. And then last but not least in my bag, I have a two person feathered friends spoonbill, I believe is the name of it, sleeping bag. So for us, both of us can fit into it and it's very warm. So we use it all year long. It's a little bit on the warm side for the winter, for the summertime, but it's fantastic for the winter, but that fits into here. So only one person has to carry a sleeping bag and that is me. Now, the other thing with the tent itself is it's a two person, but because we're both sleeping on uh, in the same sleep, sleeping bag and sleeping pad, we're both utilizing only half of the tent. So essentially people our side, size, we could fit four people into the tent, or for us, we just have a ton of room for gear in the tent. So it's been fantastic for us. Especially like if you get caught in the rain and like you don't want to hang out in a super tiny tent. Um, this tent system has been amazing and we've, we've taken it all over. We had that situation in Chile when we were down in Patagonia and it was amazing because we just got to hang out, have our space. It was great. Um, so for my pack, it's a little bit different. Okay, so it's normal. I'll go through it normally, but I'm not going to show you my food bag that I normally have because on one of our last backpacking trips, we hung it uh, properly and we still had a mouse get into it and eat a little hole in our bag and now it's unusable. So I need to get a new food bag. Um, so for this trip, Normally, I do a mix. I actually will do snacks kind of on the outside here. Um, things that I really easily want to access. That's what's great about this pocket. So like I have, since this is only a one-nighter for us, I brought a huge thing of bug spray because that was very important to me this trip uh, because it is July, like Brian said, major bug season. Um, I also have my rain shell here in case it rains. And then I have snacks. Uh, there's a Kindle, got sunscreen. So that's kind of like all in this packet pocket. And then I always bring my camp shoes or flip flops just because they're really ultra light. I can easily clean them. I know a lot of people have looked into different options for camp shoes and you'll see a lot of different perspectives. I personally just go with the good old Navy flip flops that are like $2. So I don't cry if anything happens to them. So that's that side. And then this side, I don't have right now, but my water bottle is always on this side. Um, so that is the outside of my pack. And then, like Brian was saying, you want to pack lighter options at the top that you want to get to and use. So for me, I have my clothing bag at the top currently. Um, and we love these uh, stuff pods by Hyperlite, honestly. like. They've been really great if there's any moisture or anything like that. Um, they're really lightweight. I can fit a lot of stuff in this without it busting at the seams. They're really well made. Um, so definitely look into these because... Great for organization. Oh, we use them for everything, like travel, everything. They're amazing. Um, so then the next part of my bag would normally be my stuff sack of food if I don't have half of it in the front. So I just have my place settings of our freeze-dried meals there for that. And then I have our stove system. So I'm in charge of all the food for, is how we have it split. Um, so I have the stove system. Always make sure you bring an extra lighter as a backup. Never want to get in a situation without one. And then I have the rest of our sleep system. And if I have room or if it's the right trip, we'll fit, you know, a hammock, things like that in this space. Um, this is my travel pillow. I'll throw like a sit pad sometimes. And then at the very bottom, we have our two person X-Ped sleeping pad. So that's what I have at the very bottom. And again, it might look big, but if you yeah. take, if each person is carrying a sleeping pad, that just takes up bulk in your pack and it equates to about the same size. So for me, I carry the sleeping bag, so she doesn't have to carry a sleeping bag and then she carries a sleeping pad, so I don't have to carry a sleeping pad. So it's almost half of what people are typically carrying because we're just carrying half of the system each. And we've experimented. I mean, we've been doing this for years and years, and so this is the system that has worked the best for us. Um, I can't say that we would change it anymore, honestly, because we just figured out that 
this worked really evenly like Brian talked about with bulk um, so figure out what works best for you um, and your partner if you have a multi-person situation um, but yeah that that is how we have our stuff set up and then I even have a little pocket inside of my pack too that I will put you know first aid stuff um, wet wipes you know anything that you need in an emergency that it's nice to have a pocket on the inside of your pack to just reach in really quick and grab stuff so that is what I use that is our 2021 gear loadout it's pretty much the same loadout that we always use but we're also about to show you some different options that we bring depending on different situations that we're hiking to okay so if we are going to a lake or anything like that typically i will bring a little alpine fishing pole this is just a retractable fishing pole really small size so that goes on the outside of my pack and then of course with that you're gonna need some tackle so then I have all my fishing stuff right in here, which does add a little bit of weight because there's some weights and all sorts of stuff in there. But that is one of the things that I like to bring sometimes if we're going to somewhere with a lake or a river or anything like that. And it's just a great backup for extra food too, honestly. Um, I mean, sometimes you don't catch fish, so don't always just depend sometimes, solely on a fish. Oftentimes I do not catch fish. <laughs> I try. Luck of the draw. Yep. Depends on the lake. Um, but honestly, in Washington especially, our lakes are super well stocked. Um, we have an amazing group called the High Lakers. You should definitely look into them. They're incredible. Um, and they take care of a lot of our lakes. Uh, and that's been going on for years. So, but yes. And then like my extra item, like I talked about, this is our hammock. And this actually was like a cheap purchase. We didn't end up, you know, splurging and getting like an Eno. That's what most people get from REI and things like that. This is just a cheap old Amazon one that we don't have to worry about. Um, and it works great for us. So we have that. Sometimes we'll bring our REI camp chair. There's a lot of different camp chair situations you can bring. And then, uh, like I said, sit pad is another option. But for the most part, we're like slowly adding in luxuries as the years go by. Um, we stripped a lot of luxuries out and then we've slowly been adding them back in. Yeah, which isn't completely ultralight. We kind of go back and forth with ultralight, but I mean, to be frank, most usually our packs don't exceed 20 pounds, which is still ultralight. So we're just, we're picky about what we bring. And especially with clothing, I mean, that's a huge thing. If you can narrow down weight on clothing on things like that, um, that's that's an easy thing to overpack on for sure yep that's our gear loadout